Okay, let's not go into this kind of detail. But remember, this is a factor that is going to be calculated by freezing. And this defines the disadvantage of staying in the current lane. Then another factor is called the cumulative factor. This is defined for, uh, as the disadvantage of performing lane changing. So you compare the two cases, if you change lane or if you don't change lane. So you've got two factors. And you will have, you will calculate uh, an overall advantage. So an overall advantage is a function of both the lead factor and the putative factor. Then after calculating this overall uh, advantage, you will be compared with a threshold. If this advantage is bigger than a threshold, then the lane chain choice will be permitted. <coughs> so after these are calculated, the lane change will be permitted. All right, any questions? Then if the lane change choice is permitted, the big uh, freezing will try to find the gap using the gap acceptance model. The gap acceptance model is very similar to the previous one, so I'm not going to talk about it. This is a funny thing. In Cosin, a shadow vehicle is generated uh, when the lane change perform is performed. So you change to a faster lane, but there will be a shadow vehicle created at the same location you left. This shadow vehicle will be invisible and will stay a while. So there will be no ch changing the lane change back to the original lane. This is used to prevent the oscillation. You change. If the condition is not very good, you may change back. That's what happened in AMSA using improper uh, pro uh, parameters. But in COSIM is prevented by a shadow vehicle. Understand this? Okay, I've ta finished talking about Cosin. Now let's talk, uh, think about this uh, most advanced lane change algorithm called LSA, developed by MIT. If you take a look, uh, uh, if you ob carefully observe, you will find that all the previous algorithms are deterministic. So you can calculate them and the result will be deterministic. There, will, there is no stochastic element inside. But in this MIT model, they use the discrete, uh, discrete choice model to, perform, uh, to model the lane selection and the gap acceptance. This is the general form of the utility. Utility means uh, a value that's associated with each lane. And this, uh, the utility is the larger the better. The utility will be a function of a lot of things. It will be a function of some explanatory variables and the parameters and random effects. There are several, several random effects. Here, L means lane, N means driver, and T means time. So, for example, this random utility component will follow a distribution, for, for example, a normal distribution, and it's different from for each lane, each driver, and different time, different time point. And that makes a utility function. That's a general form. And a calibrated model will be like this. I put this put it here to horrify you. To make you horrified. So a utility will be a function of these things. Of course you cannot remember, you cannot understand them. But you can see there are a lot of parameters, uh, explanatory variables and parameters, and random effects. So this is a calibrated model. After calculating this, you can use the utility of each lane to make this uh, discrete lane choice using this model that probability is equal to utility divided by the submission of utility. And this will give you a probability of staying, uh, of a lane choice. All right. Similarly, the gap acceptance is also uh, being uh, also model using discrete choice model. 
in a gap acceptance, at any time we can calculate the actual gap. This actual gap is doesn't, doesn't need to be uh, modeled in the this discrete way, but the acceptance is modeled in the discrete way. So this lead gap and this lag gap, critical lead gap, which means the minimum lead gap for me to make the line change, and the critical lag gap, which means the uh, smallest gap that I can use to make the lane change for the lag lag vehicle. Do you remember? Let's do. Do you remember? We have two gaps: lead gap and lag gap. And the gap acceptance defines um, the threshold of them. So this is gap acceptance algorithm. And you can see the form is very complex. So do you, uh, now currently do you understand the basic idea of this algorithm? They use this free choice model. Understand that? Any question? So that's the main difference. Now, let's go to the last part, data collection. In order to validate or calibrate their model, they need data. And this is the, the data collection demonstration, illustration. So they have three sections, three rows. They have three detectors at, uh, at different positions of each row, each row, different locations. So in section one, I will have three stations. Section two has three stations. Same for section three. These three sta at these three stations, they can uh, collect the data of traffic speed at any time, and the number of vehicles, I mean the traffic flow at any, any time, for each lane. All right? So remember one, three sections, and three stations for each section. They collect the data for 32 minutes, and they split the data using 22 minutes for calibration, and the, last, uh, the rest 10 minutes for validation. So that's the data collection. Any question? <coughs> they calibrated the model using the maximum likelihood method. And similarly, they make the validation. The validation and calibration are very similar. The concept, they are conceptually very similar. So L, I'm only talking about the validation part. In the validation part, they use three uh, kinds of data. The first type of data is called the lane specific flows. So they check the stations, the, each station, they check the traffic flow for each five minutes. And then they can calculate root mean square error, root mean square percent error, mean error, and mean percent error. These things, Small, the smaller better. And they compare they, their calibrated model versus uh, the, this, the new calibrated model, the, this, uh, the stochastic model, versus another model they, pro, they developed called the Mitsim. That was developed, developed a long time ago, called the Mitsim or Mitsim Lab. So the Mitsim Lab was used as a base case, and the new discrete, link, the discrete choice model was, uh, is the new, so the new case. So they found some improvement. That's the first validation using the lane specific flows. The second validation is using lane specific speed. And they, they compare the average speed for each five, uh, for each time period. The average speed for each station, for each lane. Then they can also compare this uh, to get this square arrow, room means square arrow, or room means square percent arrow. And they found some improvement. The third validation is for lane distributions by location. And this is the most interesting part. So for this, this section, section one, station two, they have, uh, what do you have, five lanes? Do you really have five lanes? Okay, they have five lanes, actually. What do you have five lanes? One, two, three, four. Maybe then here's five. Okay, let's, they have five lanes. For each lane, they compare the lane distribution of vehicles. 
and I found the observed observed is close to the new model, especially the center. So these are the methods they use to calibrate or validate their data. I just I don't say this is good or bad. So I want you to understand what they have done. All right. Okay, I finished today's lecture. It's very quick today. Now, I want to talk about the project. For a project, uh, the only one left is you. So, do you want to make a presentation or a report? You choose one of them. Choose one of them, and you don't, you don't need to do the other. I thought I was with the report group. Report? Okay. Now, I want to decide one thing. For presentation, I need to arrange some time for you. So how much time do you expect to use for each person? 30 seconds. Yeah, like 30, 30 <laughs> seconds presentation. Okay. Okay. So, any idea? Is fi uh, 50 minutes enough? 50 minutes? 50 minutes Yeah, that's funny. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. No. 15. No. <laughs> so let's decide. 15 minutes for each person. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's more than enough. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. Now it's the end. Thank you.